Hey YouTube, Sign here, this time with a quick video as I wanted to give a breakdown for each of the different fighting styles in Zenless Zone Zero since the system might be a little bit confusing for newer players. First off, there are five character types. These consist of attack, stun, support, defense, and anomaly. Each character will be assigned with just one of these. Secondly, there are three attack types, strike, slash, and pierce and characters can be assigned one or two of these depending on how they attack enemies in the fight, for example with a gun or a sword. Finally, there are five elemental types, which are physical, ether, ice, fire, and electric. Each agent will be assigned one as well and will be able to deal elemental damage associated with their element under certain conditions. Now before we get into the main part of the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content and thank you for the recent support on my Zenless Zone Zero videos. If there is anything you would like to see me cover in a future video, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will break down each system in its own group so feel free to go to the section that you don't understand well enough. Starting us off with the 5 character types. Our first type will be the attack type and it's the most generic of all the types, with its sole focus on dealing damage to the enemy via attacks. Surprise, what a shocker. What these characters tend to focus on is hitting the enemy with high damage multiplier moves and tend to stay in battle the longest due to their longer uptime on their abilities. Next, we have stun types, who unlike attack types focus on building up enemies' dage gaze, faster to push them into stun. You can see the dage gauge of the enemy in the top right corner, so always pay attention if you're using a stun character. They generally have moves or passive that will increase the percentage each attack does to the gauge. If you notice in the corner, enemy gauge will show 0% when the battle starts, filling up to 100% when they are stunned. If you look at the multiplier in the corner, you may also notice enemy's damage multiplier increases when in this state, which leads to a huge boost of damage. Additionally, some characters can increase the multiplier to even higher amounts. Now we have support characters, and these characters tend to lack heavily in the damage department. However, they bring useful abilities that aid their DPS in battle, such as buffing other agents, and biggest of all, reactive assist, which allows you to safely tag in characters without risk of being hit. I've mentioned in previous videos, but tagging in characters raw, it's unsafe, which allows either the point character or the tagged out character to still be able to be hit for a couple of seconds before leaving the battlefield, which can result in characters deaths, otherwise known as a happy birthday. I have yet to see all three characters die at once, but that would be kinda hype to see a Merry Christmas. But back to the support character. Each of them have the ability to tag in a character with a reactive assist, which is fully invincible and brings in the character with a heavy attack. These attacks so far have been long range, so they make for a good gap closer for enemies who are more mobile. Next, we have defensive types. These characters' goal is to be a meat shield and mitigate the amount of damage sustained in battle and retaliate. As it stands right now, we only have one and I honestly wonder how a 5 star version will work since this game has so many ways to avoid damage as it is, the role will be kinda hard to fully utilize in the current meta without crazy damage multipliers on the counters. Finally, we have anomaly types which focus on triggering elemental status effects inflicted with each element and they will have a higher chance than normal to apply said effects. Since we are at this point, let's talk about each element and their possible effects. As I've mentioned before, there are five elements. Each element has a corresponding debuff attached to them alongside additional effects. Starting with fire, it has the ability to deal burn damage, which will deal fire damage over time. And additionally, enemies who are organic will be affected further and be immobilized while the effect is up. Next, we have ether, which will inflict corruption on the enemies which deals additional ether damage and corrupted ethereal enemies will be hit with a confused effect attacking both enemies and allies. 
electric, which will apply a shock debuff that interrupts enemies' movements and machine enemies will be unable to take action while shocked. Ice, which has the ability to freeze enemies. Frozen enemies will be unable to move for a certain period of time and will receive shattered ice damage once they regain movement. Furthermore, there is a small chance of also dealing frostbite, which can reduce the amount of ice resistance the enemy has. You can tell by the blue aura around the enemy. Finally, we have physical, which has the ability to deal assault damage to the enemy, and just like ice, also has a small chance of armor breaking the enemy, reducing their physical damage resistance. Now, I won't lie to you, I have played Nekomata and Corrin as my main DPS, or second main DPS, for majority of the game. And I have so many hours of footage, I cannot for the life of you tell the difference in the armor break visual effect. So you just have to believe it's there. I'm sorry about that. Finally, certain enemies also have strengths and weaknesses. For example, fire is strong against organic and corrupted, while electric is strong against machine, and ice is strong against mutants. But there are also weaknesses such as ice being weak against organics, electric being weak against mutants, and fire being weak against machines. If you have a weakness effect, the damage will show up in white. But just in case you are curious, you will also still be able to debuff them just at a much, much lower rate. So pay attention and swamp when needed to avoid these headaches. Finally, we have the last system, which is the attack types. And keep in mind, characters can have multiple types, but not all three. Starting off with strike, which is any character who deals damage via punching and kicking or with hammers for some reason, shout out to Coletta. These attacks are strong against mechanical enemies. Next, we have slash, which will be characters who can use weapons, whether it be claws or blades and even spears, but not hammers. They do not count. And fun fact, when sprinting, some characters can deflect the bullets like on screen, which is pretty cool, but these attacks are strong against enemies who are ephedrals. Finally, we have Pierce, which are mainly gun and range shooters and apparently drill because they watched Gurren Logan and took the whole Pierce the Heavens part literally, but these attacks will be strong against humanoid based enemies. But in my opinion, all three should fuck up humans because what do I know? Not like I've ever been slashed with a damn sword, but I can imagine that shit will be the most painful experience ever. Anyways, that covers the basics for each attack type. There is a lot to keep track of and multiple bonuses will stack. So when we get more character coverage building around certain enemy types will be more interesting. Regardless, I want to say thank you for making it this far in the video. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content in the future. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.